That's a great point. There's three circumstances in which I generally go straight to IV iron replacement and, you know, skip oral iron replacement. Folks with inflammatory bowel disease, especially if that disease is active or has recently been active, I think you can consider oral iron replacement if somebody's disease is, you know, in remission and the reason they're iron deficient is because of menstrual blood loss or something like that. Um, but I, I totally agree. You got to just go to IV if they're iron deficient, like the patient that I shared in this in this video. Um, and then the other one is gastric bypass. Gastric bypass patients are generally put on oral iron replacement after surgery, but it's very common that they end up iron deficient anyway because they don't have a normal GI tract. They don't absorb iron normally. And the third one is pregnancy. It's very difficult to replace iron orally during pregnancy. In pregnancy, it's important to replace iron before delivery when possible so that that gets into the fetus so that they have good iron stores at the time of delivery and so that mom has good iron stores, um, especially with the risk of uh, postpartum hemorrhage. Um,